What's up, everybody? Glad to see you back. Josh Weinstein coming back with you with the one and only magnificent Mr. Peyton Gunter. Or Gunter. And <laughs> we have a very special guest with us today. Very, very special guest. American actor, uh, Mr. John Ecker. And uh, some of you might know him from Queen of the South, Firefly Lane, or his new project he's been working on, The Watchful Eye. Uh, but we are glad to have you. John, what's going on, man? How are you? Uh, not much. I'm doing pretty good. How y'all doing? <laughs> we are doing amazing. Uh, glad to have you on, man. Uh, thank you for taking the time out. Uh, and really what we want to do is we just want to kind of pick your brain about the entertainment industry. Uh, of course, acting. You are a phenomenal actor uh, known for many great roles. Queen of the South. I was my first. I was when I first fell in love with you. <laughs> yeah, when you were uh, Weto. Can you give us a little Spanish? It's Cuero, but you, you're oh. pretty close. <laughs> it's it's what? No, you said it right, Cuero. Okay, Cuero, Cuero. Yeah, I you know, was... Josh and I, as you know, have been traveling down to Colombia quite a bit. Oh yeah, um, yeah. That's yeah. cool by now. But the improvement on his Spanish has actually went backwards. So since we've been going, it's great. That's not true. I think I'm actually getting some phrases down. Mm. Um, get us comer. You wanna you eat? You wanna yeah. eat? See? <laughs> yeah, I'm getting. <laughs> I'm getting it down. I learn, you know, uh, how I'm, I'm learning how to like uh, order my coffee in Spanish. That's kind of been the hardest one for me. Um, you How do you know. order your coffee? Yeah. Well, I say, Peyton, order my coffee. <laughs> <laughs> That's accurate. <laughs> That's usually what happens. Because I'll try. I'll be like, um, yes, um, um, grande, uh, latte. Uh, and then I'm just like, oh, Peyton, will you just tell him what I want, please? <laughs> he handles it. He handles it for me. But I do need some Spanish classes. Peyton's been taking some Spanish classes. I and have. he's yeah. supposed to tell me if if it's going to be uh, in, like easy enough for me to take. She which could is accommodate. It? Yeah. So, yeah. Maybe I'll become fluent. And, uh, you know, if they ever need like a backup on Queen of the South, if they ever, you know, continue on the story and whatever i could be like the next wedo number two yeah right there you go man so uh anyway now that the josh weinstein portion of the show is over um let's get back <laughs> to john <laughs> so uh john we know you duh and so uh why don't you tell everybody else in your own words who you are and then we'll dig into that other than being an american actor got it um you cut out a bit bit at the beginning but what is it tell talk about well, yeah. this yeah, just, just tell us about who you are, what you've done, uh, what's going on in your life. Um, my, I'm John, as we've already talked about. I am uh, sometimes an actor, currently at the moment, um, unemployed actor, if anybody's <laughs> looking to hire. Um, <laughs> and uh, uh, yeah, I have, I have a degree in marine biology and got started late in life in acting. I don't think I did my first gig until I was like 27 or 28. So you all can do your calculations to figure out how old I am now. Um, and yeah, I just kind of, I uh, fell into it, but you know, it's been paying the bills for the last decade. So I'm very thankful and um, yeah, slowly but surely, uh, you know, piling on the, uh, you know, takes on the resume. Awesome. And you have a, a new project out right now, The Watchful Eye. Uh, can you tell us a little bit more about that project, what you, uh, what about it? Watchful Eye. Yeah, it was a show we did in Vancouver for a good portion of last year it's out on um freeform which it's already aired on freeform but they also air it on hulu so everybody can go watch it there hopefully everybody likes it um if you don't like it just put it on and put it on mute so you help us out with the ratings anyway um <laughs> thank you for that. but no it's a great show it's uh it's like a mystery suspense um kind of thriller whodunit murder mystery kind of show um, which you can follow along for 10 episodes and try to try to figure it out. Lots of twists and turns, um, lots of interesting characters, some uh, really good actors and had a lot of fun doing it. So everybody should check it out. Hopefully y'all have both watched it, but 
I know y'all are a lot busier than I am. Well, so. you know, um, we have been crazy uh, lately. We've had like production stuff going on. We're building Paris. But John, I will watch this show to see you, to see how everything goes. And um, yeah, I I'm excited to watch it and I will watch it. And the ratings are going to go through the roof and it's going to get picked up for another season. So you're not going to be unemployed anymore. There we go. That, that'd that be great. I appreciate that that manifestation. There we go. And everybody watching here, make sure you go check out The Watchful Eye. Um, see my good buddy, Mr. American actor, John Ecker. Phenomenal guy. All my Pilates friends have been watching it because I told them uh, to watch it. I have not watched it myself yet. However, I've probably seen uh, John shirtless on one of the promos at least nine times when I open up my Hulu. It's like just begging for me to watch it. Well, wait, I did, we didn't hear what you said. Focus but... group and find that like a, a spike among the Austin Pilates community. <laughs> and exactly. in Pilates characters for the second season. Yeah, if, if they would like me to come in and comment on that, you know, for the network, I am totally available. Okay, I'll put that in. <laughs> Speaking of uh, Pilates, uh, uh, we, we know that Peyton, he does a, a crazy Pilates class all the time. Um, these aerial techniques where he points his toes in the air and he does these <laughs> weird things. Um, I think that, John, I think that we should do like... A, a class with him. I think that me and you should take a trip to Austin and we should do a, a serious vlog about us doing his Pilates. I'm totally down. I'll do it. Yeah, I'm down for that too, but it's not going to be serious at all because I'm going to be laughing at both of y'all the whole time because you're going to see that it's not as easy as you think. When I told him before, I'll go to Pilates class and then he comes to a CrossFit class. I'm not afraid of CrossFit. Been there, done that. Let's go. But I can't look the same way. And then, <laughs> and then after that, you know, uh, maybe a little powerlifting, since that's kind of what I'm into right now. A little powerlifting, mm -hmm. one of your yeah. cold plunges. There we go, cold plunges. Uh, they've been known to make babies with when, when you cold plunge. So, this is yeah, uh, breaking news behind the yeah, a little breaking news. Uh, Mr. John Eckert and I. Uh, went to Boston, Massachusetts, and I took him to uh, my gym, and we went cold plunging, and we did some power lifting, and uh, that's when um, he made a baby. Him and his wife made a baby, and they're expecting their first child. Breaking news here, right? I don't know if it was the cold plunge or all the beer and pizza at the Bruins game. <laughs> it was it was full of good decisions that weekend but uh so john um how did you get started into acting man like what was it that you know uh came to your your mind and you're like this is what i want to do well actually before you answer that i have a better way of asking it so first off as like a foundation so what these videos are about or for that we're putting out there are you know to give free content away we want to kind of enlighten people as to what it's like kind of behind the scenes in the industry right now and so as you know we go out and we audition people all of the time and i've been doing this for a heck of a long time but for the last two years i've been seeing a ton of people like from you know scientific and technical roles show up to audition for us scientists accountants you know chemists whatever and so marine biologists i haven't had one of those yet but hey so yeah w what made you even become interested in this whole acting world this entertainment world what was that whole process for you well before you answer that john that's <laughs> pretty much what i asked yeah i did a, a little bit better Please, please enlighten us. <laughs> um, I, I wasn't really, to be honest, you know, like I wasn't interested in it at all and had never given any thought into being in the entertainment industry. I'm y'all. Y'all know my wife and she's the exact opposite from the time she was a kid. She was making movies and wanted to do it. I had no interest in it and never gave a thought to it and just kind of happened to fall into it um, because I was working as a research diver and 
relocated for a number of not, not even a number of reasons. I was just visiting people outside of the country. Met a girl, decided to stay in that country, and then the opportunity presented itself to go into an acting school. And there wasn't thought put into it. It was about the same same amount of weight you put into what you're going to do for dinner tonight. I was like, well, okay, I can't. There's no research diving in Mexico City. I'll do this, and I'll do this for a week, and that week turned into a three year program. And it's just, I just kind of accidentally went down a road, and before you know it, it the fork that where you started is too far behind you, so you just keep going. Hmm. So you did a three year acting program in Mexico City. Yeah. And then I got a job after that. And then just kind of, you know, every time I get a job, I assume people are going to see it and nobody's ever going to give me a job again. But I've been lucky enough that I, it's, you know, I, I, it keeps going. So here we are. Well, that's working for you. So re remember, everybody, he's unemployed right now. So yeah. <laughs> <laughs> everything I say with a grain of salt. Yeah. <laughs> so I, I mean, what is the what is the training like for you in preparing for like one of these big roles? Like, I mean, what's what's it like, uh, you know, just preparing yourself mentally for uh, like going into a role? Um, I, I don't know. I don't know. I don't, I'm not I, I don't. I, I think it depends on the role. Um, I, almost every role that I've ever booked, when I get the audition, I assume that I'm not right for that role and I won't book it. And when I do book it, I'm like, Shh. there's usually something that I feel like I I don't like. I'm not, I uh, like I'm not a legit person to play a certain role. So I think if anything, I just kind of focus on that so I don't feel so out of place playing that role. Um, so I don't know if any of that makes any sense. Um, and it just kind of depends on how much time you have. I almost always do TV as well, which is usually like a four to six month process. And a lot of times you don't have a lot of time from the time you book the role to the time you start. So it's a little bit of like on on the job site training the first couple episodes you you're, you're getting to know everybody you don't really know where they're taking the story and then you kind of start to find it as the uh the series goes on if that makes any sense okay okay so but how do you like prepare like lines so they give you a script and you see your your part of it like how do you prepare yourself when once you get uh that script in front of you like I've already booked a job and I got to go like in two days to go shoot scenes. Yeah. Um, it, it, it can vary for the most part. Um, if, if there's a lot of dialogue and it's really dense and there's things that aren't very like quotidian vocabulary ways that I'm not used to speaking, I'll go over the lines a lot. So it feels natural to say it. It could be something as stupid if I'm used to calling, you know, my wife, babe, and for some reason, they're always writing baby and they want you to say baby instead of babe. And it just feels so unnatural. I'll try to start, you know, integrating certain words or vocabulary. So on the day, I don't feel so like off saying it. And it feels a little bit more natural if there's or I'll, if there's like a monologue or something like that, I'll work on it a lot. But otherwise, I'll, you know, it's more of just knowing where that scene is in the storyline, in the dramatic arc of the character or, or the episode. And I, just having a loose idea of how you imagine it going. Cause I found when, when you try to lock down a scene, exactly how you think it's going to go and the tonality of it. And, and, and like, I guess the, the tempo changes and everything. And then you get on set and the director, the producer, the other actor has a certain thing. It becomes hard to get out of that framework that you've, rehearsed in the hotel room or your house for three days or a week so mm -hmm. i like to know the dialogue so i'm off book by the time i get there to rehearse and whatnot but not have it locked in how i i expect the scene to the go delivery okay that's cool that's cool well how do you how do you memorize these lines because i mean how like how many so you have a scene it, you're going to shoot for <laughs> I don't know, however many hours the scene is going to be. They give you, you know, all your lines. How do you memorize, uh, like, what like what technique do you use? Um, to, to be honest, I'm lucky. I'm really good at memorizing. Getting through college taught me how to, like, I think memorization is a muscle you work. 
just like some of the weird muscles that Peyton works doing Pilates, um, <laughs> stronger, and you get better at it, and you memorize a lot quicker, um, which sometimes is good and sometimes is bad. Um, so I can usually just go over things and learn them pretty quickly for the most part. And then obviously you can rehearse it with people because you can kind of half know it off the page, but you need to say it out loud. You also need to know what your cues are. And so it's always good to rehearse. I think like, obviously I have the luxury of having my wife here um, so I can rehearse. And then for things that are kind of shorter turnarounds, a lot of times like auditions, especially if you don't have somebody to work with, there's apps like there's one called cold read, which you have to do a subscription and you can basically record your lines, the reader's lines, and then just listen back to it. Listen to just the reader's lines, just your lines. And um, I find that that's really good just to kind of familiar, 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 gain familiar, fa familiarize, familiarize yourself with the scene <laughs> and, and stuff throughout the day. You can listen to it while you're doing your Pilates class, you know? Right, right, right. I mean, we listened to other things there, but thanks for that tip. I'll keep but that, that in mind that's a great tip. For, audition. <laughs> maybe Peyton, you should start uh, like taking things that I say and like listening to them at the gym. Like you know, I'll tell you like different things, and I think that's a great idea. You call me and send me voice messages enough that I don't have to do that. I don't need an app for that. <laughs> Um, so how would you say as far as, uh, you know, training for you right now? Like, I mean, are you training still like with different acting coaches? I mean, how do you, how do you stay, uh, sharp on your craft? Um, I, to be honest, I don't really, but I'm also unemployed. Maybe that's why um, <laughs> Maybe I need to work a little harder. Um, I've, I've just found like, especially with doing TV and stuff, I think, the the best way to get better at it is like with anything is actually doing it. Um, so like, I feel like being on set for a month, you're going to learn more than, you know, being in an acting class for a year. Um, I think it's great to go and do it and get it like, a, like a basis and stuff, but past that it's just working. And, you know, for the most part, I tend to work a decent amount and then do auditions that I feel like, I guess, you know, keeps me sharp. And then, when you work, I tend to always be on location. I almost always tend to work in Vancouver or Chicago or someplace I don't live. So when I am back home, I'm usually taking advantage of, you know, you know, being with my wife or getting things done around the house. Or now we have a baby coming. There's a million things to do. So when I'm not working, that's like my vacation. And then when I work, that's like my vacation from, I guess, my normal life. And so... I, th I think it kind of just depends on how much time you have and where you're at. And also we don't live in LA anymore. We live in rural Tennessee. So, you know, it's not like, you know, I can just open up Google and find the closest acting class. Like when I lived in LA. Right. <clears throat> so with you guys being, you know, in Tennessee now, what does the audition process look like for you? Um, you know, everything is, is virtual. I, we really kind of looked out with our timing, um, of deciding to move and everything with COVID everybody switched to, to doing virtual auditions. And now that we're, you know, we're in the clear with all that people, it seems to work. People can work remotely. They can live wherever they want and casting directors and everybody don't have to show up to an office. And so from what I hear, there's not really an end in sight as far as going back to in-person auditions, at least for general castings. I'm, I'm sure to start changing at some point for like chemistry reads and, producer sessions but up until now everything is is virtual so it, it doesn't really matter where you're at i mean obviously depending on where you're at in your in your path as an actor just if you're starting out you know getting in rooms and meeting agents and stuff like that helps me in la but for us it doesn't make a difference whether we're living in alaska or la we're going to shoot our auditions and send them in so hmm. <clears throat> well that's very interesting uh and actually you know great to hear for a lot of our clients uh, because a lot of our clients are based, well, right now, I guess, around the world. Um, but, uh, you know, we're trying to uh, coach how to audition virtually and the, and the techniques yeah. of that. So, Yeah, before, I mean, I would never have, I mean, sometimes you would get a virtual, a, a virtual audition that you'd have to send in. But a lot of times it was either because you were working and literally couldn't attend the session or you were getting in with a new casting director or something that wasn't going to take the time to actually see you, but you could send in a tape. 
Uh, but now it's, you know, just across the board, everybody, it's, it's send in your tape, which, you know, some people like it. Some people don't. I tend to like going into the room. My wife likes shooting it. So everybody's different. You know, when you shoot a tape, obviously you can work on it a lot more, but at the same time, you have this feeling of like, is it being watched? Is it not? Whereas in your room, you get that immediate feedback and stuff. Right. But, you know, it's just the way right. the industry is going right now. Hmm. So, um, I mean, with it being like virtual uh, and you submitting, what about like constantly keeping up your headshots or your portfolio looks? I mean, are you are you still doing that? I mean, what is that like for you headshot wise? Um, you know, I've done I, I don't know. I, I personally feel like and and again, I don't I don't know. You probably take most of my opinions with these things with a grain of salt. But like I feel like mo I usually when I have to do new headshots, it was when I did commercial auditioning, which I don't do anymore. That tends to a lot more. It's important. We need to see your look. We need to see you as the young dad. We need to see you as the young professional, as the lawyer, as the nurse, as the doctor and have these different looks and these different styles. And I've done headshots and I've sent them to my agents. And for some reason, every time I book a gig and I'm in the in the production office, there's usually a wall of all the characters. And they're still using the same headshot of me when I was like, you know, from 10 years ago where I'm like embarrassed to see him. Like, I don't look like that. And it's not a traditional headshot. It's a black, dark background. It's a medium shot. I'm wearing a beanie, which they always say, you know, you don't need a headshot <laughs> with like headwear. But for some reason, I don't know, that's the one they use. So, but as far as keeping up with that stuff, there's a lot of things I should probably do more. I should probably be more active on like upgrading my resume and doing my IMDb and, and putting out content on Instagram and upgrading my headshots. But it's the same. I mean, there's headshot photographers. There's good photographers wherever you're at. So it's the same. Of course, you're going to find a higher density of them if you live in Los Angeles or New York. But, I mean, there's photographers in every town. So it's easy to do that stuff from wherever. Is it that one? No. <laughs> I, it's another one with a black background. And I'm wearing like a shirt that's embarrassingly tight for me now when I look back on it. Um, I love that pic. That pic. I used to dial in photography. I took in my garage in LA with like a remote. Um, and I used to have it on my MDB. And some people were like, I don't know if you should have that one up. You should change it. <laughs> so, I, I mean, talking about not being in LA, how are you adjusting to not living in like Los Angeles where everything was happening for you? I mean, do, are you still finding it's – pretty much consistently the same as to when you were living there? Um, for, for me, for the most part, I mean, I was never a person that spent a lot of time, you know, having coffee dates with people and talking about projects. I've never been like that mover and shaker business type person. So I wasn't, I, I never really cared about going to premieres or red carpets and talking about an idea for a pilot or a YouTube thing. So I have my hobbies that keep me busy and there's always this internal conflict with maybe I should be more of that traditionally professional when it comes to acting and be doing that kind of stuff. But then there's a part of me that's like, this keeps me sane and in the real world that I have other stuff that keeps me busy. So out here in, in, in Tennessee, it's pretty much the same. I just have a lot more space to do that stuff. Um, a lot less people talking about the industry. Like when I lived in LA, everybody around me was, you know, a writer or going to film school or something. And then out here that, you know, there's, they have no idea about that kind of stuff. So that's nice. At the same time, you kind of deal with this, like, am I, am I outside of the, the bubble or like of that reality and not right. that happen. But at the same time, I think objectively speaking, I think, I don't know, at least for me, helps me keep me sane. And in the real world, I always equate living in like being in Hollywood as like, I don't know, pick any vocation. It's like, you know, like let's say you were a builder or a contractor and everybody in your neighborhood is either a plumber, electrician, a framer, a finished carpenter, a concrete. And it was just like, you. it's an alternate reality. And that's the way it was there. It's like everybody was a writer, a director, special effect, like something. And right, it just right. to feel like, I'm, like my sample size of the real world just isn't, isn't appropriate, a proper. So right. I don't know. Well, I mean, it seems to be working for you. I mean, 
I mean, you don't go to acting classes. You kind of just fell into acting and uh, you've been very successful with it. I mean, you're on multiple TV shows, so maybe you're just lucky. Well, I will. I will premise all that with up until this last show, everything that I booked, I was living in L.A. when I booked it. Mm. So. Let's check back in a year and see if I booked anything. To God. <laughs> People don't realize that it's such a long process. Like this show that just finished airing, we started filming it eight months after we did that. Like, you know, it's like a year and a half process between, you know, you book a gig, you go and shoot a pilot, you sit around and wait for the pilot to get greenlit or canceled. And then they green light it. And then, okay, it's going to be a few months and then you're going to go do it. Then you're going to be shooting four or five months and there's post-production. So, you know, it's, it's a drawn out process. Hmm. Interesting. How does your uh, uh, agency feel about you not being in LA? They, you know, they, they do not have an issue with it. I have, I have a great agency and, you know, I was a little like, we bought our house out here and I'd already decided to move before I told them. Cause I was a little bit afraid of how they would take it. And they're like, Oh, okay, that's fine. That's great. Hmm. So who, who are you represented by? If, if you don't mind, I'm, I'm with a, an agency called the Koner agency. In LA, owner agents. I've been with the whole time since they got to LA, and they've always been great, and I've been really lucky. How hmm. important is representation for you, or has been for you? Um, you know, everybody has it like a different path. I've been really lucky, and I got representation pretty quickly after I moved to LA, and I got lucky that I got with you know, my agents at Koner and it's always been great. And I've always had a great experience. And I know for some people, it takes longer to get an agent. Uh, some people have agents and managers. Some people work with a manager for a long time and don't have an agent or vice versa. Um, you know, I think it's just, it's just important to, however you are in life and with your profession, just to have somebody that, you know, it's like anything. It's a, it's a professional relationship that gels with you and 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 I, I guess y'all kind of see eye to eye with what you want to be doing. And, you know, also somebody that, you know, is investing themselves in you because they're going to they're going to hire you on and you're not paying them unless you work. So they're investing their time trying to get you out there and stuff with the idea that you're going to work. So, you know, it's just important yeah. to find somebody who believes in you. Do you think that um, you do you think that you would have booked any of these 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 roles without having the representation well no, like on your own if you were just like on like casting hub or, or whatever and i mean do you think that that I, you would have still booked the role without representation no, no. i th i think you know i think i yeah i think you you need somebody to like get you the auditions and get you into the rooms if it's in person and somebody to call up and be like hey watch this guy josh weinstein i think he's going to be really great for this somebody that's going to push for you and maybe you know uh, to have him take a second look or also i know it was really important for me when i first started auditioning the audition process in the u.s was very different from what i was used to in latin america and so to get feedback and be like, hey, they thought you were really green. You didn't do a great job. Like you like like they would tell me I didn't do like so that was nice to get feedback. I mean, there, there's different levels of roles. And so I think there are maybe, you know, kind of I don't I don't know what the right term is, but, you know, because there's levels, there's, you know, background actors, there's co-stars, there's guest star, recurring guest stars, series regulars. It there it's there's a hierarchy to these roles and. You know, I think the the better your representation, the higher you, you're going to get kind of placed what kind of roles you're doing. I, and it, it's either based off your representation, your resume or something to kind of build you up to get, you know, get up that ladder. Um, so I don't know if like at the beginning, because I know there are people that do self-submit for auditions and stuff, um, but I don't really have any experience with that. Like, through, you know, I think... The, uh, what it, I don't remember actors access and right, right. And things like that. And I'm, I'm sure there are where you can't get in, um, especially for kind of those smaller roles. Right. But I, but meaning like career level opportunities or making it a career. I mean, you, you would say that it's, it's probably really important uh, to have some proper representation and people that believe uh, in, in, in your journey and your brand and what you guys, you know, you guys have the same goal in mind. 
Yeah, because they, because the, the, the your representation. I mean, these people, which again, I'm not an agent or a manager or a lawyer, so I. But they have they have relationships. You know, this industry is like any industry. There's relationships, and they have a rapport with casting directors or directors or producers or writers. Right. And and so the more rapport whoever you're working with has, it makes it easier. You know to get into the door or to get people to pay attention to you at the end of the day, you got to do the audition and do a good job and get it. But, but, um, but yeah, it's just part of the process and you need somebody to help mold you and guide you. And I know my agents would say, you know, I used to have long hair and wear a ponytail and was just, you know, hanging out on a Venice beach and stuff to be like, you know, that's great that this you are, but maybe just clean it up a little bit because at the end, you know, there's, there's types of roles for everybody, but you know, there's Man, some well, adjustments you can sometimes make to your appearance that will make you eligible for a wider variety of roles. I wish I would have known you in the ponytail days. Give me a second on Google images. I might be able to find it. <laughs> well, what we should do is put Peyton's old pictures up against your ponytail pictures and see which one is. Yeah, they'd definitely be worse. Than... I don't have ponytail pictures, but yeah, it's pretty but bad. He has... yeah. Have you seen, have you seen Peyton's pictures? Like his hair is like covering his whole face. Like, you know, <laughs> it's, it's not my whole face like you could see it but it could it's like one eye is like peeking through definitely not that bad <laughs> oh that style is coming back i want to see it because I've, i mean i don't know how long i've known you all for but uh, peyton's always had the exact same hair oh <laughs> I'm, yeah no uh, it's it's i might have it actually that, that, I might that, have that's it. probably coming pro to a group text near you soon yeah okay absolutely but I think it'd be great whenever y'all edit this together if it can be like a little insert about what we're talking mm -hmm. about in this case, Peyton's emo days. It wasn't quite that, but <laughs> yeah, yeah. Let's talk just about your uh, overall appearance, your fitness. Um, I mean, would you say uh, it's important to, you know, stay fit? Is this an intervention Eat. that because I've gained weight? Did Lauren? No, actually, <laughs> not trying to get some workout tips. So go ahead and give those to him. <laughs> Well, I'm not sure what you said, Peyton, but well, yeah, he, it he, records he it on that. my side, even though y'all might not hear it. So that's all that matters. Okay. You know, I was just saying that Josh was just trying to get some workout tips because he obviously needs them. Look, obviously. Okay. That's yeah, too obviously. In like, no, I'm that. just saying like these things, I mean, they're registered at this point, you know, um, and, and look. I was, this was a question for John, not a moment for me to flex, but you gave me that opportunity. So I took it, but John, how do you stay fit? What's your daily uh, workout routine? Uh, you know, your skincare routine. That's, that's what we want to know. Um, as far as skincare, I don't really have one. It's whatever, like if my wife will give me a product and tell me I should put this on, that's about it. <laughs> um, that's the same with my wife. I mean, Peyton. He tells me this. He tells me the same thing. <laughs> but no workout. I. For, I mean, I go to CrossFit. The way uh, Peyton's at Pilates, I'm at CrossFit. I just don't put daily posts on Instagram like he does. Um, <laughs> and then I also have like I like I like I tend to like lifting, uh, do power lifting movements and stuff. So I have like a rack in my garage, so I can supplement with that as well. And I I do CrossFit just because I have no patience for cardio. So I found that, you know, when I was, I, I was eating a lot and lifting heavy and so I gained weight and I was like, I gotta, I gotta work on my cardio, but I just can't sit on a treadmill or anything. So I got back into CrossFit just to have something to push the, the like the, my cardio levels and I love it. Um, and besides that, I'm, I mean, we're just really active. We have a lot to do around here. I do a lot of woodworking and stuff. So I just, and working around, you know, we have a decent sized property, so I'm on my feet all day. So. I, I, yeah, I, I, I heard that you uh, you recently have uh, an Airbnb property called The Whalen, uh, and mm -hmm. you, you can book this, right, uh, on The Whalen. Is there like a website for this too? Uh, Laura did, yeah. My wife did make a website, but yeah, we have it like Airbnb, VRBO and stuff. Awesome. We have, it's, it's, yeah, there's two. There's like a loft and a house and that property. We've got chickens and goats and lots of stuff to keep us busy. So is it on thewhalen.com? Is that what it is? I believe so. I can't remember if it's the whalentn.com or yeah, just we, we the should Wayland. probably just post the link down below. Okay. The link is. is right here. Yeah. Boom. In case any of you would like to uh, come and see Tennessee and stay in a celebrity home, uh, <laughs> check out the Whalen. 
Uh, I've heard it's an amazing property, lots of land, wildlife, uh, and all of uh, you'll have everything that you can imagine to do in Tennessee will be at the Whale Inn. And word on the street is, is if you book the VIP package, you get like a little wood souvenir that John makes. Oh, wow. Yeah. Oh, I, didn't, I didn't see that. Lord, do that as an add on. Yeah, it is <laughs> add on. I've already, you know, booked that for a little, a couple months out. Thank you. A little yeah. cutting board or something. Or yeah. Some, yeah. So you should start now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, I mean, it, hey, listen, if all else fails, uh, Mr. American actor, John Ecker is an amazing uh, carpenter. Is that what we call it? Yeah, a carpenter. Yeah, He's like woodworker. a woodworker. Woodworker. Yeah. Didn't yeah. you just make a record machine or something? Or a... uh, no, I made a bookshelf that functions as like a record player, like console too. Oh, that's all. Yeah, that's awesome. Okay. Well, it just tells me what to make, and then gives me examples, and then I go off that. <laughs> <laughs> very talented, very talented actor, very talented woodworker, uh, and also very talented baby maker. So. Uh, congratulations on all three. <laughs> yeah, um, so, uh, so John, uh, what would you say to, uh, you know, actors wanting to get into the industry? They're just starting out, um, you know, just kind of like words of advice. Like, what would you tell, what would you tell you 12 years ago, as far as wanting to get into acting, you know, um, just some words of advice. Um, I, I mean, I, I think the same advice I would give, I, I, I would tend to give most people like going into like college or like trying to figure out what they want to do in life. I really, I wish we pushed more importance on having a vocation in life, like a skill that you're able to do besides what you want to do in life. So you have something you can fall back on, something you can make money off of uh, besides just like service industry jobs. So I really wish it was more common that we learned woodworking, welding, uh, whatever, you know, auto shop or whatever, Be become a seamstress, whatever you find that you can develop a skill that you can make money off of. I feel like, those kind of like two year vocational jobs. I wish we had to do that before college. Um, she's something to fall back for. And I think it's even more important when it comes to acting because it, like, like you, like you said, you have a lot of people coming to audition and they're from the science thing. Like I have a degree in marine biology, that degree, while it was great and gave me a lot of life experience, it does nothing for me in my life. Like besides being able to say Latin terms for fish on holidays. Um, <laughs> but if if I took that time and went to vocational school and learned like I could, uh, you know, underwater uh, welding or became a woodworker or something like that, then you have something that a skill that will follow you through no matter what you do in life. And then you can also make money off of and you're not forced to only be like become a bartender or a waitress or something like that, which is like the stereotypical what actors do while they're wanting to get a job. Um, and I think that's more important with acting because I, I view acting as not like it, it's kind of like playing the lotto. Like I'm going to go buy lotto tickets tonight, but I'm not budgeting on the fact that I'm going to win, you know, the billion dollars. But if it happens, kick ass. I know what I can spend that money on. So I feel like, you know, it's it's hard. It's like, becoming, you know, it's very there's a lot of competition. It's hard to get into. It's hard to make a living on and it never gets easier. It's not like you reach a certain point and you're like, OK, well, I'm tenured and now we're good. I mean, that does happen for some people, but it's not common. So that that's my advice. Find something else that you like to do and you can charge people to do to kind of keep you going, to keep your head on straight while you're trying to become an actor or or not become an actor. I mean, if you're auditioning, going out and doing stuff, you're an actor, but you're not getting paid for it till you book a gig. So find something else to make money to keep you sane. If that makes sense. That does make sense. That that does have have a backup plan. Yeah. Uh, have something you know steady while you're following your dreams. Uh, yeah. For sure, that, that that absolutely makes sense. Those that, that's fatherly advice. Thank you for starting the fatherly advice chat here with us today, uh, <laughs> before the kid is born. <laughs> um, Peyton, any last minute questions for American actor Mr. John Ecker? Um, I don't have any last minute questions right now. I can always reach out later if I do. We didn't hear a word you said. Yeah. <laughs> <Doesn't matter then. laughs>
<laughs> I don't know why it does that, but on my side, it's going to be like I'm talking normal and waiting for y'all. But anyway, uh, yeah, I don't have any last minute questions. I can always like reach out and text if I something comes up. I'm good. You got my number, Peyton, if you need advice. Wow. Great. Way good to time. just throw it out there that you talk to John on a regular basis. If if we're if we're being clear, we all do. We're in a group chat together with John and his wife. So yeah, we can I'm all also do allowed that, to Peyton. talk to him privately, but thanks, Josh. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, we send a lot of very appropriate memes. Yes, we do. <laughs> well, uh, John, again, thanks, man, for coming on and just uh chatting with us. I do appreciate you uh for taking the time out of your day. Please tell your wife. Thank you for letting uh, us borrow you for um, however long this has been. Uh, and uh, yeah, man, appreciate you. Hope everything right. goes well uh, with the with the new baby that's coming up. We're all excited for it. So, appreciate it, man. Yeah. And Laura's happy to get me out of her hair, so she appreciates it well as well. And hopefully, I'll get some usable material out of this. So, oh yeah, I think definitely. yeah, I think that you, you've given some uh, amazing information, uh, and uh, that you're a really lucky guy. Also, that's one thing that we have in common is we are both very lucky guys, and Peyton is extremely lucky to have us as well. That's what I feel like too. Um, on that note, I think John has some crown molding to make. <laughs> all right well uh again thank you guys for watching uh the youtube channel make sure you follow all of our socials if you're looking to go to tennessee make sure you check out the whalen uh that amazing property there and make sure you check out the watchful eye you can see the phenomenal american actor mr john ecker uh and that has been our time thanks for watching mm -hmm.